So next we'll talk about strategies to identify overlaps between pairs of reads, as well as using those overlaps uh, between pairs of reads to assemble contigs. And so the construction of what's called an overlap graph uh, helps a lot in terms of uh, building an assembly, at least conceptually. Um, and so the way you build an overlap graph is that suppose you uh, sequence 10 uh, reads from a given genome. And so those reads are represented by the blue fragments on the right of this slide. Um, what, how you build an overlap graph is, graph is that you first draw a circle or what's called a node uh, for each one of the reads that you've sequenced. So if you sequenced 10 reads, then you should draw 10 circles representing 10 nodes in this graph. And then what you do is for every pair of reads or for every pair of nodes in your in your graph what you do is you check for overlap between those pairs of reads and so here uh you know if you're looking at the two reads corresponding to what i've labeled as read a and read b <clears throat> what you do is you check to see whether for example the end or the suffix of read a closely matches the prefix or the start of read b and if that's true, which it is in this case, then I do I draw what's called an edge or basically an arrow leading from the node representing read A to the node representing read B in this graph. Um, because then, uh, you know, if there's a lot of overlap between the suffix of A and the prefix of B, then I'm assuming that again, those two reads follow each other uh, in terms of the original position on the genome. And so a really critical point here is that um, you have to decide what the, essentially what the minimum number of bases that are in the suffix of read A have to be overlapping the prefix of read B in order for you to draw that arrow, right? And so you could imagine uh, if your reads are of length, say, 25 base pairs, right? So the fragments that you can sequence are only 25 base pairs in length. Um, and if you require that the last 23 bases of read A have to exactly overlap the last or the first 23 bases of read B, then the only way that you're going to be able to you know, detect overlap between read A and B as if they are almost exactly from the same position of the genome. And so in order for that to happen, you need very high coverage on your genome. And so what's the point of building this overlap graph? And so here's another example of this overlap graph where I've defined uh, or I've allowed two reads to overlap each other if at least three bases from the end of one read exactly overlaps three bases at least three bases on at the start of another read and so in this particular example we have three reads from a given sequencing run um, and you'll notice that uh, in this overlap graph i've drawn on the bottom there's an edge from node a to node b because the last three bases of read A overlap the first three bases of read B. There's an edge from uh, node B to node C because the last four bases of node B overlap the first four bases of node C. And more importantly, there's no edge leading from uh, node A to node C because, uh, you know, the only overlap you see between the end of A and the start of C is the let, is the base C. And so that overlap of one doesn't, you know, is less than the three that I defined as being the minimum. And so this is basically the overlap graph of, of the three reads that I've gotten from this hypothetical sequencing run. And so again, the point of the overlap graph is that the structure of the graph tells you something about potentially about the structure of the genome that the reads came from. And so in this hypothetical example, 
Again, you have three reads, reads A, B, and C. You have corresponding nodes in this overlap graph. And you have edges from node A to B and from node B to C. But importantly for this particular graph, you actually see an edge from uh, node C to node A. And that's because the last seven bases of read C are exactly the same as the first seven bases uh, of read A. And so what this, so basically what you see here is this overlap graph has what's called a cycle. So a cycle in a graph is, uh, is a particular structure in a graph where you can start it, say for example, in this case, node A, uh, and if you follow these arrows that you know lead from one node to another, you can go from node A to node B to node C, and you can actually make your way all the way back to node A. And so there exists a cycle in this overlap graph. And so cycles are kind of interesting because, well, not, you know, they can happen for a number of reasons. Uh, number one of which is that they can happen when uh, your genome is circular, right? And so bacterial genomes can be circular uh, as well as mitochondrial DNA. And so if you build, if you do a lot of sequencing of these circular bacterial genomes and you draw overlap graphs, you'll see a, you'll see a cycle because there literally is uh, circular DNA in the genome. Uh, the other common reason why cycles happen is because of repetitive sequences. And so in short, overlap graphs allow you to essentially see uh, see cycles in a graph and therefore tell you about you know where potential repetitive sequences are. And so you know just to drive home this uh, this point further, when you build this overlap graph, you have to define what constitutes an overlap. And so, you know, in the above example here, if you have two reads X and Y and they're of length nine, uh, as they are in this case on this slide, then you have to define what's called the threshold L, which, uh, you know, which basically says, you know, X overlaps, read X overlaps, read Y, if at least the last L letters of X overlaps the first L letters of Y. And so in this hypothetical example, L equals three here, because um, you can see that uh, the first, uh, or basically the last three letters of uh, read A are overlapping the first three letters of read B. Uh, and there's an edge there. And uh, B is connected to C because the last four letters of B connected or are the same as the first four letters of, of C. And so in this case, you know, our threshold for determining overlap is, you know, a three base pair minimum of three base pair overlap. And your choice of what this threshold should be, should it be three bases or should it be like 10 bases or one base has a pretty big effect on what your overlap graph looks like. And so I want you to take a few minutes now to try drawing a few overlap graphs just to get the hang of constructing them given some reads from a genome. And so here we have a hypothetical genome shown at the bottom of the slide in red. And from this genome, suppose that you've sequenced 10 different reads where each read is colored in blue. And now you want to construct an overlap graph. And so on the previous slide, I mentioned that one of the key decisions you have to make when you construct an overlap graph is that you have to decide how many bases at the end of one read, which we'll call read A, have to match the beginning of another read, which we'll call read B, in order for you to draw an edge from read A to read B. And so I called this parameter L on the previous slide. And so I want you to draw three different overlap graphs for the same set of reads here, where you kind of vary this L parameter between one, five, and 100. And so what that means is that basically you can draw, you're going to draw three different overlap graphs where you've required either just one base to overlap between reads before you draw an edge between them, or you required a minimum of five or 100 bases of overlap before you draw an edge. And so it should become very obvious what happens when L is too big or too small.
So here, make sure you take a few minutes to stop the video and make sure you try the exercise on the previous slide. So shown on the right is the overlap graph you should have gotten if you chose the parameter L equals five, which again means that you required at least five bases from the end of one read to match the uh, bases at the start of another read before you draw an edge. And so the point here is that you should have realized that when you choose kind of like the right L parameter, then the overlap graph that you get is fairly nice in the sense that in the best case scenario, you get a chain of nodes where basically every node only has one outgoing edge to another node. And in total, because in this specific case, you had enough uh, reads to cover the entire genome. And that means that the entire genome sequence can be recovered by drawing essentially a path through this graph. And so you have to realize that in the absence of any sequencing error, when you have a graph like this on the right, um, because every read came from somewhere in the genome, that means that if you were to try to reconstruct the original genome sequence, every node has to come from somewhere in the final reconstructed genome sequence. And so when you have a simple graph like this, then it's easy to recover the original genome sequence, again, assuming you have high enough coverage, by basically starting at uh, basically a node with no incoming edges, uh, like the one on the bottom and just kind of drawing a path through all of the nodes in the graph. So in this case, you would start at the node at the bottom, and then you would kind of follow the edges and reconstruct your genome sequence as you're moving along until you reach the final node at the top. And so uh, I mentioned that, you know, cycles in the overlap graph represent potential repetitive sequences. Um, and the reason why it's important to be able to identify repetitive sequences is that repetitive sequences are, are very challenging for assemblies, regardless of whether or not you draw an overlap graph. And so imagine, for example, that, um, you had a hypothetical genome like that shown above where you have, uh, for your given genome, you have, uh, flanking sequences represented by the blue sequence. And uh, in the middle, you have a repetitive sequence, which is labeled as repeat A. And so the problem you have here is that suppose you're using short read sequencing uh, combined with whole genome shotgun sequencing. Basically, the problem you'll get is that you'll get a whole bunch of reads uh, from the flanking regions uh, represented by the blue and you get a whole bunch of uh, reads coming from the repetitive sequence, the repetitive region A. And so the problem is that if you don't, you know, ignore the, ignore the concept of overlap graph for a moment. If you didn't know what the original structure of the genome looked like, so the top half of this slide was, you know, unknown to you, then if all you see are the reads on the bottom half of this slide, the problem is that if you have a whole bunch of reads that look exactly identical, in this case, because there's so many of them, there's so many reads that are red, you know, that are exactly sequence identical, you would probably guess that region, you know, that sequence represented by those red reads probably point to a repetitive sequence in the original genome. But because your read your reads, for example, are relatively short, then it's actually, you know, based on this data alone that you're looking at on this slide, you can't actually tell how long the original, um, the original repeat A region was. Because from a sequencing perspective, if all you have are these short reads, um, this collection of reads you see here on the bottom half of the slide are what you'd expect to see if that repeat region A was, you know, 20 base pairs, or if it was like 100 base pairs, um, you'd probably still see the same collection of, of reads uh, coming out of the machine. And so basically one of the goals of, you know, the overlap graph, for example, is to kind of detect uh, these kind of ambiguous regions where you probably have repetitive sequence so that you can at least flag it and say, okay,
I know this region is repetitive, uh, or I think it's repetitive anyways. So, and I know that the assembly is not going to look very good there. And so uh, it allows you to flake that repet potential repetitive sequence and then basically just separate out contigs which are unambiguous, which don't have repetitive sequences. And so, um, you know, it's more, you're, you're basically, um, the overlap graph is just basically providing a way of identifying these problematic regions so that you can just ignore them or throw them out and, and consider them later.